Our first special guest is one of the members from the SOG. He's been here uh, from season three of the Bay Talk Radio. He's been here for a long time, and uh, now he's here once again. This is my brother, Lamar Campbell, a.k.a. G Consciousness. Welcome to the show. What's going on? Peace out, Showtime. Peace to the audience out there, brother. How you feeling, man? I appreciate you allowing us to do this class tonight and also for the brothers to um, and ask some questions and get some answers tonight. Uh, you know, um, it's always a pleasure, man. Uh, I, I enjoyed the show you had last night with the uh, devoted to y'all on there. Uh, you know, but I had to call in and, and get some stuff straight with the brother, man. And, you know, um, the brother don't want to debate, but tonight we're still going to teach on some things about Deuteronomy 28 and give the people some understanding on this, you know, from a uh, perspective of what we see biblically, you know, as being Christians, as well as, um, you know, uh, what does the Bible actually say for us from a Hebraic Hebraic perspective on some of these curses that we see that happened that took place in the book, you know, does it really, you know, talk about the Atlantic slave trade verbatim, you know, does it, what what does this book actually say? You know, um can can one rely on and say, well, the curses follow, you know, the African Americans or the Latinos or the um you know, the rest of the chart, you know, the Mexicans are those from the islands, so to speak. Does these curses follow these guys? And, um, you know, uh, what does it mean for a curse to follow someone? And what does all that stuff mean? So we're going to basically get off into that stuff tonight. And mainly, if, if so, Sal, you know, this probably will be a part one, you know, because uh, we're not going to get out all what we need to get out. So tonight what we're going to do is to deal with uh, the biblical perspective because we know that a lot of people are going to say, well, we don't take that history or we don't take this and that. So we want to deal with uh, the internal content of what Deuteronomy 28 is saying from a biblical perspective and then uh, possibly on other shows start dealing with um, the external information that's outside of this text. And um bringing that all together as being something cohesive. So this is really part one. You know, you might got two or three down the line that we want to, you know, get off into. Um, and then after that, we're, uh, after that, you know, really teach people about concerning the instructions of the laws because, you know, it's been said behind, uh, well, a lot of people that, you know, Christians are lawless, you know, um, and I think that that's just not the case. Uh, we teach the New Testament, which comes with constructs. I mean, comes with instructions, and so, and also um, terms and conditions, as well as penalties. So um, when we say Torah, Torah means instructions. You know, um, every instruction that we see is not in the Law of Moses, but there are some instructions that is in the Law of Moses, or some teachings. So we just want to clarify some things there because some things were said about us last night, you know, that uh, I definitely disagree. Um, you know, I want to say this last thing briefly. Um, I think that it's a disservice when you got these guys that don't know the cultural context to go around screaming that they're Hebrew Israelites, but not really, don't really want to dig into the information and look at the cultural context and then pick and choose what law that they want to do. You know, uh, that's just a, you know, that's a disservice. And I feel that devoted to Yah, you know, he was doing that last night, you know, uh, and I see why the Jewish people, you know, do the things that they do or some of the people that are, you know, down in the Limbers or some of the people up north or uh, in the East or in Americas, they really study the Torah or the instructions. They, you know, th these guys discredit them. I half doing the homework and not really seeing what's going on here. So I just want to bring that out. All right, once again, that was G Consciousness right there, one of the members of the Source of God. And my next special guest, he's been here before, he's inside the Lions Den a few times. He is back to present the lesson. Joining with G Consciousness, this is Brother Faithful. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's going on, South Showtime? Soldiers of God, stand up. 
Yeah, man. All right, what's up, man? What you want to say to the people before we begin? Uh, Yeah, basically, uh, you know, kind of reiterating a little bit of what uh, G Consciousness said. Um, We're pretty much going to present the correct, the correct, this is key word here, exegesis of Deuteronomy 28. Um, showing it in its correct cultural context, showing it biblically. Uh, while we won't be able to get into everything that we want to present uh, as far as outside of what's actually laid out, we can definitely go through a few things here and there. Uh, but those few things will probably be absolutely devastating to the position held, especially by the one Westers, the ones that go by the fake 12 tribe chart. Those people, they definitely got a handful tonight. Um, What we plan to do is uh, to come out, show how their interpretation, their private interpretation of those verses does not line up with scripture. We also plan to show how the verses, uh, you know, are pretty much laid out in the scriptures. And um, 68 is an interesting one, but I'm going to save that one until we get into the lesson, man. I think 68 is going to be a shocker for a lot of people who have not done thorough research in that area. But uh, above all else, what we plan to do is to show how those curses befell Israel because of their disobedience. However, because we are in a new covenant, not a renewed covenant as these people would have you believe, but a literal new covenant that is formed in Christ Jesus. Those who are in him are not under the curse of the law. And we're going to find out tonight why. So that's all I got to say, Sal. All right, family, we're going to jump right into this. Like I said, get your pen and pads ready. For new people out there, this is a show where you can call in, y'all. You can call in with your questions, your comments. All you got to do is dial that number via phone or via Skype, 319 527 6239. Press number one, knowing you know that you have a question. All right, fellas, you can take it away. All right, man. So, uh, G Con, do you want me to go ahead and start off or do you want to start off? I mean, it really doesn't matter to me, man, but I got the chapter in front of me. All right. Right. Uh, I, I just right. want to uh, say this real quick before we start. I want to make okay. sure that uh, you guys know this is not a uh, uh, attack on, you know, uh, those to that believe that they are Hebrew Israelites or, you know, that are Hebrew Israelites. But this is just to, you know, bring out the text. It's still love there, you know, uh, because we're commanded to love, you know, above all. This is not right. to cause any type of confusion or any of those things, you know, um, we just really want to deal with the information, you know, with these brothers, because it's been said that, you know, we are not, we have hatred in our heart. It's, it's, it's nothing like that. So we're just about dealing with the information and that's it. And, uh, um, you know, to get off into, you know, the text, I just want to say that this is a, um, God is basically bringing these people, you know, um, into the land, but before he brings them into the land, he wants to establish some things with them, test and prove some things with them if they would uphold the law of Moses or the instructions that he's given them. And so he gives them this rundown, and I'm pretty sure we all know what Tory is. We know what a contract is. We know that there are terms, conditions, and penalties, and there are some things that, you know, uh, if you do not keep or hold that bargain up, then you're up under the penalties of that. So we see we have the blessings and we also see that we have the cursings. And and so, Uh, you know, I don't Can I jump in for a uh, moment, brother? Can I just say something very quickly? Also, just to add on, these are the outlines of the old covenant, correct? So so everybody out there knows these were the outlines of that covenant, which uh, the children of Israel did break because of the disobedience. But, um, you know, but but just to reiterate, we're right in, brother. yeah, we're not we're not making this a personal attack on uh, he, people who self-identify as uh, Israelites who are truly in the Messiah, who truly love the Messiah, according to the new covenant. But if you've made the old covenant the starting point of salvation, well, tonight we're going to find out why that isn't the case, especially in light of these curses and how that pertains to Jesus Christ and how He redeems those who are under the curse of the law by his blood. But needless to say, man, uh, you want me to go ahead and start things off, man? 
Go ahead, brother. You got it. All right, here we go. All right, so let's start off. Everybody knows, you know, the first 14 verses are really just talking about the blessings. Now, 15 is when we begin to get into the curses. Now, the curses are what befalls the people for not following the words of the covenant in that, in that covenant that was made at Sinai. So what ends up being said here, starting at 15, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, let's look at 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. And I just lost my uh, thing that's loading on me. Hold on one second. I'm going to repeat that again if this thing would load. All right, here we go. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Now, these, these are pretty much general curses. The, the next two, for example, 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kin and the flocks of thy sheep. Where do we see this being fulfilled in scripture? Lamentations chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And I quote, Mine eyes do fall with tears. My bowls are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and the suckling swoon in the street of the city. They say to their mother, where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the street of the city, when their soul, is, when their soul was poured out in their mother's bosom. So right off the top of the bat, we're already seeing that during the time of Lamentations, during the time of the prophet Jeremiah, these things were already occurring on the people. Again, because of their disobedience. So I, I think that these are right now just general curses. Now, Hebrew Israelite proponents, specifically of the One West variety, will pretty much agree, I think, with us and say, well, yeah, this is just talking about, you know, general curses that befell Israel. But I guess my question would be, how are these applicable to the situations that occurred, for example, in this country or in, for example, West Africa? You know, that, that would be an interesting question to see if whoever calls in could possibly, uh, you know, tell us how exactly they would break this down. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much general. And uh, G-Con, I don't know if you want to jump in. If you have some words to say about that. Uh, no, I definitely agree with you. Um, you know, uh, just to be noted, uh, you know, this is concerning. These curses just don't start in the 1500s, you know, uh, AD or the Atlantic slave trade around that time. These curses actually start you know, before then. So I just want to make sure because a lot of the Hebrew Israelites, what they'll do is they'll try to start the curses at that time, 70 AD, and then they skip all history or historical content of it prior to, you know, uh, the 70 AD and also the Atlantic slave trade. So go ahead, brother. All right, man. So now we're going to go ahead and read 19. Curse, those, curse shall thou be when thou comes in. Cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. Now, this is easily broken down in Second Chronicles 15, 5, excuse me, uh, 15, uh, 3 through uh, 5. And it says, now for a long season, Israel has been without the true God and without teaching priests and without law. But when in their trouble, they turned unto the Lord God of Israel and saw him, he was found of them. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out nor to him that came in, but great vexation upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Now, notice the language that's being said when they went in and when they went out. Again, we're seeing these things being fulfilled in Scripture every single time Israel disobeyed God. Every time they did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, these things came upon them. And granted, I'm showing clear examples. I want the wording to be clear. Notice that it's even telling you when they went in and when they went out. Just as it's exactly how it's telling you in this verse in Deuteronomy, uh, the 19th chapter, in 28th chapter, I mean, excuse me, 28th chapter, 19th verse. So again, we're noticing that these things are pretty much just uh, clear. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read. Uh, well, actually, Brother, brother uh, G, do you uh, want to chime in? Yeah, and uh, I want this to be noted that usually time that, when you see these curses befall them, 
these are also curses that God has also put on the other nations because the scriptures is clear that the curses that he put on them were like, for instance, the botch of Egypt. These curses had befell on them. And because these other nations was wicked, they took on these curses. And so Israel, when they became wicked, they also took on these curses. So I just wanted to bring it out. And, um, you know, I don't want to overlap the brother because um, we have almost the same scriptures uh, dealing with uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 20. But uh, you was going to get to that uh, next, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. So starting at 20, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. And all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing, doings whereby thou hast forsaken me. Where do we see this happening? Isaiah 51, 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of, the, of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. And also 2 Kings 19.3. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke and blasphemy, for the children are come to birth, and there is not a strength, enough strength to bring forth. And again, if, we, if anybody knows what went on during that time, this is showing that both northern and southern kingdom have been turning their backs on the Lord in the future. Because keep in mind, these events have not occurred. There is no king of Israel during the time of Deuteronomy 28. There is no temple. None of these things have come. Now, much later in the future, we begin to see these things, obviously, beginning at Solomon uh, and what he did, which is eventually what caused northern and southern kingdom to split. But needless to say, we're seeing that the same issues are afflicting the children of Israel in the future. The very things that they were, they were told if they did not do would bring curses and vexation upon them is the very thing that caused them to fall, uh, as you know, we're clearly seeing in just these two verses. Now, I can bring out much more than this, but uh, I'm going to definitely let G. Con jump let in and share out. his thoughts. Right. Now, on, on, uh, we also have Joshua 23 and 16. It says, when ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he have given unto you. Now understand this. Now, as the brother Faithful just said before, right, the northern tribe also perished off the land. Well, the southern tribe also perished off the land just as the northern tribe. So we don't want to hear no excuses of saying, or, 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 or people saying, well, the northern tribe, they was acting like the Gentiles. Well, hold on. The Bible says that the southern tribe did worse than the northern tribe, than her sister, the biblical text says. So we don't want to hear no, none of those excuses. Both of these guys was carried off of the land. One of them was carried with their king, and we're going to get off into that later on, with their king off into Babylon, and the other one was carried with their king, the northern, off into Assyria or through, or through the Assyrian provinces. Go ahead, brother. That's right, man. Now, let's look at 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish now where do we see this occurring amos chapter 3 verses 9 to 10. look at the language people i have smitten you with the blasting and mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased and the palm were devoured it yet have ye not returned unto me saith the lord i have sent you among the pestilence after I have set among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses and have made the stink of your camp to come up onto your nostrils. Yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So right there we're seeing the very same things that it's telling you in this. And trust me, this is actually going to be reiterated 
a couple of times in this same chapter. You know, the, the diseases of Egypt, so on and so forth. But and just to bring that out real is, quick. Yeah. Amos was, uh, it's, 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 it's dated to 824 to 810 BC. So I just wanted to bring that out. So he's writing during a time concerning these things that's dealing with possibly the Assyrian Empire before they even went off into uh, captivity and the things that they was doing in the land. I just wanted to bring that out. And that's the right. conventional, that's the conventional uh, time. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. And another thing also to note, uh, again, where are these things occurring to the people in the church? Now, if, if they want to say, well, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, black people get sick and, you know, they get scabs and they get, you know, mildew in, in their houses. And, well, a whole lot of people get that in their houses, you know, or a lot of people get infections, get different things like that. So when do we see these things occurring during, you know, I mean, now they, they want to find all these little, because I'm sure it's, it's it, I mean, some of this stuff right here that we're reading can be taken generically to any group of people. But the truth of the matter is this is actually occurring in scripture because these events actually took place. So for the one that's making the assertion that, well, these events don't begin to take place until the 1500s, scripture is contradicting you. Because here you see this happening to the actual Israelites in the land exactly as Moses said would happen to them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read uh, 23. And this is the one they like to go to to claim that, um, you know, it's talking about them being bound up in chains, right? And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. 24. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Now, Notice that 23, they'll try to say that's talking about chains and, you know, when slaves was in chains, but that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about a drought. 24 actually is the clarifier for 23. But you actually have camps out there that will teach people that 23 is talking about slaves being bound up in chains. Not understanding the cultural context. I mean, it's very clear. Look how it says, thy, thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth shall be, un that, that is under these shall be iron. Now, where do we see this language? Now, you give me a second. It's, it, we, we sit out to prove this point, because they'll say, oh, but that's just your interpretation. Look at Leviticus 26, 19. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. We see this fulfilled in Haggai 1.10. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. Also in 1 Kings 17, 1, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Which is exactly what Christ says in Luke 4, 25. But I tell you the truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. I mean, this is pretty clear. This is talking about drought, which actually occurred in the land of Israel to the Israelites. So, Ron, go, go ahead and share your thoughts, man. Right. So, uh, definitely, I definitely agree with you, brother. Uh, you know, we've seen that the famine or drought, there was a... Uh, do in Israel uh, that it was in Israel and one of the things I want to bring out is that when we look at the famine and drought it causes a very dry and dusty climate and so we see that they experienced a lot of drought in that time and also in the time of Ahab dealing with Elijah when uh rain did not come on the land and so uh definitely I'm just waiting till you get down to the certain part that I want to get at that they always yeah. do that. <laughs> Let's keep on, That's let's right. keep on moving. Uh, right, 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 right. Now, let me go ahead and give me one second. Um, all right, hold on one second. I'm trying to get the verse. Okay, so that was, I just lost my place. All right, 25. So let's go to 26. 
and thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Actually, hold on. Actually, I, I, I skipped up. I'm sorry, sorry. Let me, let me go to 25. I'm going to read 25, but I'm going to tie it together with 26. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies, and thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, and thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. In other words, nobody's going to shoo them away. They're, they're going to consume them. Now, with that being said, where do we see this occurring? Well, if you just give me a second, this is actually occurring in Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 33 to 34. Because again, 26 also ties into this as well, where it says, and thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and, on, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Now watch what it says right here. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowl of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the cities of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. Again, Jeremiah 15, 3. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowl of the heaven and the beast of the earth to devour and to destroy. So we see these things occurring during when? The Babylonian captivity. But you tell Hebrew Israelite proponents this, and they'll tell you, well, we fit all the curses. Well, question, were you guys personally made food for the birds and of the beasts of the field? Because this is talking about what happened during that time. As we read in Jeremiah, this is being fulfilled with the Babylonian captivity. So how, how does this apply to West Africa again and the transatlantic slave trade? Um, hmm, let me think about that. Does it even apply? That's a question that y'all should be asking yourselves. If, if you're looking at these verses this way and trying to make this fit the narrative of the transatlantic slave trade, which was a horrific event, by the way. I'm not minimizing that in the slightest. But what I am doing is showing the holes in the arguments used by Hebrew Israelite proponents who will make appeals to these verses and say that these curses fit them. So, uh, g -Con, what do you think about that, man? I definitely agree, brother. Keep on moving. <laughs> Keep on moving. <laughs> okay. I, I hear you, man. That's, that's a good sign. We're we getting close. 27. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scabbard with the itch whereof thou cannot be healed. Again, Amos 3, 9 through 10. You don't even have to deal with that. This, this is all talking about what we read earlier. It's just being reiterated to them. Let's look at 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt only be oppressed and sold evermore, and no man shall save thee. Do we see this happening in Scripture? Lamentations chapter 4, verses 11 through 14. The Lord has accomplished his fury. He has poured out his fierce anger and has kindled a fire in Zion and has devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the, adver the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem for the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. Also, Jeremiah 19, 9. For the voice of the wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. Isaiah 59, 10. We grope for the wall like the blind and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as... In the night, we are in desolate places as dead men. This is very right. clear. I mean, these verses show that Israel was afflicted with blindness, not just literal blindness, but blindness in, in the sense that they could not see their folly. And because of that, the curses were going to fall on them. This is very right. clear. The madness and, and one of thing, seeing one their thing people I, destroyed. Yeah. 
and one thing I want to bring out, because when we're bringing out these curses, what we want you to understand is this. This is because they are transgressing. And I want to, I want to bring out something real quick. Uh, in Genesis 5, and 15 and 16, because he brought these same things on the other nations just as well, as I stated earlier. But when we look at Genesis 5, I mean 15 and 16, it says, But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So we know that the Amorites was doing a lot of things that was uh, iniquity or transgression towards the Lord or wicked deeds, right? It is not yet full, right? So let's look at some of the things that the, uh, that, uh, the uh, Amorites and, uh, and the Canaanites was doing that God was going to use the children of Israel to destroy them and put them off of the land. Watch what it says. Uh, in Genesis 13 and 3, right, it says, uh, uh, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Why? Because they was dealing with homosexuality, right? So when we also deal with Leviticus 18 and 22, it says, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. So when we look at these other scriptures just as well, some of the other nations was doing uh, 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 for us adul adultery and different things. Uh, they was idolaters, you know, uh, uh, beast uh, beast theology. These are a lot of things. Uh, uh, Leviticus 18 and 23. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defy thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there there too it is confusion so these are a lot of things that the other nations was doing that he was telling israel not to do and if they did these things he would bring the curses on them that's why when we look at deuteronomy 18 it says when thou art coming to the land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou should not learn to do after the abomination of those nations there should not be found among you anyone that make of his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that use divination or any observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a ne uh, ne necromancer for all that for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So number one, understand this. If the Lord, the almighty God, is driving Israel, using Israel to drive these nations out for their sins and for them uh, uh, violating basically what God told them not to do, why is it that he wouldn't drive Israel out of the land and send them somewhere else if they break the covenant and also send these very same uh, 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 curses that we see this on Israel on these other nations. I just wanted to bring that out and make that clear because you're not the only one that experienced these things just as well, but you're going to experience them worse due to the fact of you knew better because the Lord spoke to you or spoke to Israel first face to face and they was the first nation that he brought up out of of Ur of the Chaldeans when he when he spoke to Abraham and made them a nation to contest the false gods and to live and to deliver and to be an army or a troop on the earth to deal with these uh, false ideologies in the earth that we see. Hey, hey Deacon, and let me interject as well very quickly. Um, at the same time, you know when you say you know Israel, uh, and that's something that we're going to get in a little later. Many of the guys that self-identify as Israelites can't prove that they're Israelites. They can't. If they say that you identify as one by the curses, we're going to show you that even the nations are under curses. We're definitely going to prove that tonight. So if you self-identify as an Israelite, don't think that because you, you claim to be under curses that somehow that validates you as a child of God. No, no, no. The curses validate you as someone who has been cut off from God, whether you are an Israelite or not. Continue with this, man. Uh, so we were in, what was that? What was that last one? That was 29, right? Let's go to 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. That shall, thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt, plant a, thou shalt plant a vineyard and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Where do we see this happening in Scripture? Jeremiah 8.10. Therefore will I give that their wives unto others and their fields in them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness from the prophet even unto the priest. 
everyone dealeth falsely. Again, the Israelites' entire nation, whether you were in the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom, because remember, they're the same people. They were divided because of what happened with Jeroboam and Roboam. What ends up happening? The nation is divided, but the wickedness of the people remains the same. Both kingdoms were wicked. Both kingdoms went into captivity. Why did they go into captivity? Because they weren't upholding the mandates, the rules of the covenant that they were under at that time. So these things that are occurring, if they want to try to apply this, you know, if a Hebrew life proponent wants to apply this to the transatlantic slave trade, it doesn't necessarily fit that narrative because we can see the same things occurring in other people groups. You know, uh, for example, they would look at this and say something to the effect of, well, if, you know, you're, you're going to be, a, you know, this is talking about when you got a girl and, you know, a brother go and see, you know, you with your girl and you want to take your girl or, you know, you got a house. But, but how does, wait a minute. While, while that one is generic, thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Uh, shall, shall not dwell therein. So, what about these guys who built their own houses and actually live in their houses or who own property? I'm talking about Hebrew Israelite proponents who own their own property, who actually own uh, vineyards and, and things like that. Are they going to say they don't actually own that property? Are they actually going to go out on the limb and try to say something like that? Because this wouldn't fit that narrative. You know, if, or, or, for, or furthermore, now they want to go back to slavery times and try to bring that into the equation. The question is, when did the Lord say he would liberate Israel? Um, well, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to withhold that argument because I already know how they might try to spin it. And actually, I'm going to withhold that argument. I was going to go somewhere with that. But uh, needless to say, G. Khan, have you ever heard some of these guys in these camps say that these verses uh, uh, apply to them, but be the same guys who actually are homeowners, who actually own vehicles and own property and own things? Not saying all black people do, all Hispanic people do, but needless to say, if you actually own something, how does this verse apply to you? That specific verse. Don't talk about slavery time, because we're showing that this is fulfilled in scripture. But how does this apply to you? Right. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Yeah, jump in, brother. Yeah, yeah. And so and so, you know, when we when we look at these uh curses, you know, let's uh make it clear that um as we as it was stated before a lot of these things you know fall on people um due to the fact of disobedience and not only that is uh some some things may be you know uh it follows you because of um you keep you you, you keep saying it for real so it's, it's it's a cycle you know it's a cycle it's something that's following you to bring you into remembrance but this happens in life if a person is not following instructions uh, Proverbs is clear. It says the way of a transgressor is hard. So if you're transgressing, there's nothing good that's going to come to you. You might think at that point that you're getting away with it, but it's going to follow. This is why when we look at all the kingdoms in the world, they was high on top at one moment. Then they fell. And now it's like these kingdoms are, are, are barely rising back up or they, they, they thrown down because they fell due to the fact of the wickedness that they was bringing forth as well as individually whatever you do in your household if you're doing it and it's iniquity it's going to cause you and your family to be uh to, to to have some type of uh uh consequence behind it so innocent blood can be shed by something that you do so these curses that we see are curses that not only followed israel but also followed the people you know that uh consistently sent against the, against the most high because the uh, way of the transgressor is hard. So I just wanted to bring that out. Right. But, uh, what verse and, you uh, What chapter uh, verse you have? Okay. Let me actually go that I was talking about. Uh, let's see. That was 30. Uh, yeah, I was in 30, so I'm going to go to 31. All right, so uh, I'm going to 31 30, now. 30, 30. Yeah, 30, 32 also, too. It says, thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with thee. Now, I want, I want you to understand this because, you know, we study history over here very well. The Semitic mm -hmm. cultures, and not just the Semitic cultures, but other cultures of people, uh, mainly what they would do is, is come in your household, defeat or take the, 
uh, husband out of that household or, or use that household or, or they would kill him or use him as a servant, but they would take their wives and they would go into these people's wives or they would take of the maidens and use their, the children or the, or, the, or the virgins for maids in their household. This is Semitic culture. So when you look at this, this is what the enemies would do unto Israel. And there's also some texts that state that Israel can do certain of uh, those things just as well but not uh, stealing servants or, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, uh, treating their servants uh, uh, badly, but treating them like they are uh, is Israel, like they have come among Israel. That's, what they, that's how they were supposed to treat them. So I just wanted to bring that out that, you know, this is something that happens once people fall short of God's glory. Once they fall short of right. not really following his instructions, uh, nations, fall to these type of things and people fall to these type of things right now uh let me go ahead and read 31 and 32 thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes and thou shalt not eat thereof thine ass shall be violently taken away from thy face and shall not be restored to thee thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies and thou shalt have none to rescue them Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fall and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Where do we see this happening in the scripture? Jeremiah 5, 16 through 17. Their quiver is as an open sepulcher. They are all mighty men. I wonder what this nation is. Hmm, this is talking about a mighty men here. Who could this be, Laurent? We're going to find out a little later. And they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, and which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thy herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced city, wherein thou trusted with the sword. The Lamentations 118. The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandments. Here I pray you, all people, and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. Also Jeremiah 31.15. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. So this is very clear that these things were actually occurring to the Israelites during their time when they were actually a kingdom, when they were two kingdoms. And yet all these things befell them exactly how Deuteronomy 28 says would happen. But I guess my question is, how does this apply to the transatlantic slave trade? And how does this apply to the, well, to, to the things that happen here in America? You know, I, I would really like a Hebrew Israelite proponent to call in and explain that to me. How do you reconcile these verses? And it says uh, also uh, uh, in 33, it says, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors, right, shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. You know what I'm saying? And so we gonna, that's going to get crucial right there. And thou should be only oppressed and crushed all way. These curses are things that befall people when they turn from God, when they turn from him. These, this is what happens. Right. Everybody well, in this, wants in this covenant, Right. In this covenant, this is, this is what was happening to them because the Lord laid out rules for them and they broke his rules. But I guess I would also ask this question, even though it doesn't have to do with this chapter. If sin is the transgression of the law, who were the first sinners and what law did they transgress? And the follow-up que follow question to that is, was that law contained in the law of Moses? Well, we know that the first sinners were Eve and Adam. And we know that that law was not hearkening unto the voice thy God. But was the rule of not eating the fruit of the tree found in one of the laws found in the Mosaic Covenant. No. It was a different rule, but it was based on the same two principles that these laws were based upon. Love thy God above all things. Love thy neighbor as thyself. When a person broke those commandments, whichever one, they broke them all, right? So Adam and Eve introduced sin into this world because sin is not introduced in Deuteronomy 28. It's introduced in Genesis 3, through, through Eve being tempted by the serpent, going to Adam, and then Adam eating, both of them 
did not hearken unto the voice of thy Lord. They did not love their neighbor as themselves because they could have stopped one another and they did it. And they did not love their God above all things by not hearkening unto the voice of his word when he said, do not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Very simple concept, right. huh? Right. And, and so when we even look at, because I, I want to bring this out, when we look at the, the word uh, law there, we look at law, the word law is uh, H8451 in the Strong's, and it's Torah, and it means direction, instructions, uh, um, also uh, a precept or statute, especially uh, uh, for the Pentiarch law. And the reason why I'm bringing that out is because its, it's origin is from, um, it comes from, the root is from Yara, or Yara. And it's 3384, and it means to throw, shoot, cast, pour. Um, so what, what, it's give, what it's saying is to shoot for, or uh, to point, or to aim, or to teach, or archer, instruct, lay, shoot, teach, teaching, thorough. And the reason why it's bringing that out is because once you are given these instructions, right, these instructions don't necessarily have to be the law of Moses or the instructions they was given at that time. Prime example, uh, in order for Israel, for Adam to come about and to uh, be fruitful and multiply, there would have had to have been some type of ancestor. Um, the Israelites, they don't want to deal with that. They're going to tell you otherwise or contrary to that. Not only that, uh, the instructions that was given unto Moses was stated that such incest cannot take place. They'll say, well, Abraham was up under the law. That's, you know, uh, they'll go to certain scriptures. Well, Abraham, the law, the, he had the law. He had the, uh, he, he obeyed God's law, statutes, and commandments. Um, that's not what, it, what, 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 what you, you're misinterpreting in that. Because Abraham obeyed God's voice. Get thee out of the, uh, uh, of the Chaldeans and, 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 and get away from your family. And, and also uh, circumcision and which is ordinances and also uh, what God commanded him to do. Uh, Paul is clear. Christ is clear. The law came by Moses. Paul says also the law was added 430 years after the promise. Who was the promise given to? Abraham. So if Abraham had the law, he would never did things that he did with his father's daughter, nor Jacob, nor also Isaac. Which did things that can't if, be if I could interject to uh, if I could interject ahead, to brother, brother, it's also the same thing where we see, for example, Noah. For example, everybody that the Lord dealt with was given different rules, and it was under, I guess you could say, different situations. So, for example, Adam and Eve, right? Different rule. Uh, Noah, he was given mandates, but his mandates were not the same mandates as were given to Moses. Abraham was given law, statutes, and commandments. But his mandates were not the same as Moses because we know that he didn't have the mandate of, uh, you know, marrying next to king, you know, the co close relative, whatever you want to call it. He didn't have that mandate, right? We know that, for example, Noah didn't have the mandate of circumcision. Abraham did. Moses did. So we know that there are different mandates that are dispensed in different ways for different people in different times. This covenant is based on a very simple mandate. If anybody wants to know what that is, they can read Romans 3, verses 27 through 28, which is the definer of Romans 3.31, if anybody out there wants to check that out. Uh, and everything happening in this covenant is done by the Spirit, which the common man did not receive in the previous covenant. That's why these people had to follow signs. They had to do things. It was all done on tablets of stone. Because all of it was pointing towards the great redemption which would come through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this covenant. All this was a plan from the very beginning. And glory be to the Father for sending his son to fulfill that plan. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and keep on, man. So we were at 34, right? 35, uh, well, actually, you know what? Th 33 and 34, again, Jeremiah 5, 16 through 17. Very easy to explain. 35, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the, so with the sore bust, which cannot be healed, from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Again, Amos uh, chapter 3, verses 9 through 10. Now let's go to 36. And this is the one. The Lord shall bring, thee, shall bring you and your king, which thou hast appointed to a nation which... Actually, hold on a second. Am I reading this? 
might be the wrong version. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Now, very quickly before you get into this, because I know you want to go in, uh, brother. This is the one you, I know you want to go in. <laughs> My question is, they, they try to say this is talking about uh, Christianity and Islam because they say wood and stone. But that's not, that's not what this is talking about. Brother G, why don't you tell them exactly what this is talking about? Right, definitely. Uh, once again, it says, The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee. Now understand, it says, Thy king, which thou shalt set over thee. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 17 and 14. Let's look what it says. It says, When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Notice it says, when you come into the land which the, which the Lord your God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou should in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. But what I want to bring out, is that it says, to the land, when they get to the land, right, which the Lord, your, our God, will give them. Watch what it says. Verse 16, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. This is literal Egypt, literal Egypt. And we're going to get off into the history of the Bible and show you it is literal Egypt because Israel always went back unto Egypt, especially up under Solomon, to get horses. We're going to bring that out, though. It mm -hmm. says, to nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he shall multiply horses. Watch what it says. For as much as the Lord have said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. Now, let me bring out something real quick. Because this is going to get real interesting. Let me bring out this really quick. <laughs> I, I want to show, show you guys. While, while you're doing that, brother, go ahead and pull that out. But I was going to say, this is the funny thing. What king was over the people of West Africa? You know, during the transatlantic slave trade. Who's the king? This is a question that we constantly ask Hebrew Israelite proponents, and nobody has been able to answer that with any sort of like reasonable response. It's always been something illogical. It's because that's right. not talking about the transatlantic slave trade. It couldn't be talking about the transatlantic slave trade. And if anybody wants to, <laughs> if you want to actually discuss that, and you know, if you want to bring out your information on that, feel free when you get a chance to call in. Because that is very right. debunkable. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, now, just to let you know, me. fellas, we do have a few people staring about with questions. Let me know whenever you're ready. All right, cool. Let me bring this out real quick. Yeah, let let him bring this uh, out, and then we'll take it off. Yeah. It said Exodus 14 and 5. Watch what it says. It says, and it was told the king of Egypt that the Pharaoh fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he chose two, two uh, took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt. Now I'm bringing out these chariots because what's driving these chariots and pulling these chariots is horses. Let me show you why he told them not to go to literal Egypt and why Egypt was the place that they got horses from. This is talking about literal Egypt. So let's not get down to Deuteronomy 28 and also uh, 68 and, uh, uh, and, and say that it's not talking about literal Egypt when it's been talking about literal Egypt all in Deuteronomy 28. Watch what it says. First Kings 10 and 28. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt, which the Lord already told them, don't return that way. But he went that way anyways. And it says, and the king's merchants received the linen, yarn at a price, 
and a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. And so for all the kings of the Hittites and for the kings of Syria, did, the, did they bring them out by their means? So Solomon, not only that, not only doing that, he paying for other people that surrounded him, the Hittites that's with him, uh, that surrounded him with these horses just as well too. Second Kings 7 and 6, watch what it says. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, and says, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel have hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Why? Because let's read down. And their horses and their asses, even in the camp as it was, and fled of their life. Because the Egyptians, guess what? They had horses, and Solomon was going to literal Egypt. And not only that, guess where Solomon's wife came from? Egypt, he had one of his wives to come up from Egypt, the daughter of the Pharaoh. Let's go back to the chapter and look at it again, where he says literal Egypt. He says, when you come into this land, right, he says, thou should in no wise set him, hold on, I'm sorry. He says, when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me like as unto the other nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose, one from among thy brethren, shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he shall multiply horses. For as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. Guess what Solomon did? Multiply wives unto themselves. Guess what Israel did? They came into the land and they picked they're set over them where the Lord chose their king who he set over them. And I'm going to show you when I go back to Deuteronomy. I'm going to show you when I go back to Deuteronomy how the, those kings was also taken off into the Assyrian Empire, also into the Babylonian captivity. And after that, there was no more kings appointed. So where are these kings? Slow down, that slow, down, down, slow down, son. Slow down, son. You're killing them, son. <laughs> nah, right. nah, nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm joking. So watch I'm what joking. He said. I'm joking. So, so watch what he said. He says, neither shall he multiply wives to himself, and his heart turn not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sit upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write upon him a copy of this law and a book out of that which is before the priests of the Levites. Josiah, they in his time found the book, he had never seen it. <laughs> and it was brought to him. So they was already in sin already through what Solomon and also them other guys had did. So let's jump back over to what's called and then we're going to open up for questions. Yeah, Watch what it says. Yeah, absolutely. It says, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee. So we just got already the exegetical passage that speaks on what these gods were going to do or the king that they set over them. It says, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods with a stone. And as Brother Faithful will tell you, as they, they stated, this is Allah, Muslims, and this is Christianity. The wood is uh, Christianity, and the stone is the Kaaba stone or something like that, uh, is Islam. That's what they'll tell you, right? This is not talking about that. Let's look at something real quick. Uh, uh, watch what this says. Watch what this says. Uh, Deuteronomy, I mean, uh, um, Jeremiah. And if you can, brother, if you got the other ones, some other scriptures, you can grab them too, because we can get those before we open up. Um, okay. The other scriptures we talked about earlier, uh, Jeremiah five and fifteen. That way we can go a little bit quicker. It says, "Lo." He says, "Lo." Now everybody didn't know about Jeremiah. Je the, Jeremiah is 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 telling these people that Nebuchadnezzar is coming. That's the first thing. He coming, and they need to get it together. He's warning these people. And Jeremiah experienced Nebuchadnezzar coming, and also 
one of the other kings prior to being taken, uh, the first time Nebuchadnezzar came, which was Jehoiachin, he took him. Then after he took that king, uh, uh, Israel rebe- continued to rebel, the southern tribe. And he came and he took Zedekiah, which was the last king, but he took them guys off into, guess where? Babylon, off into his, his area. So it says, watch what it says. Jeremiah 5 and 15. It says, Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation. And notice it says, it is an ancient nation because guess what they'll do? Oh, man, this is talking about America. And they came from afar, which that is so fallacious. Then they'll say, oh, man, uh, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, we know it's them because they, 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 they got the eagle and the, and, 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 and this and that. But this says it is a ancient nation. Why is it right? America is a young nation. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. It says, saith the Lord, it is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understand mm. what they say. Now, check this out. Now, you know already, faithful, break down to this. You know what they'll say. But before we get there, grab them. Other, you got them other scriptures? Well, well, hold on. Before we get to that, very quickly, because I know the call is probably waiting, but, but very quickly. Let me, let me actually point something out very quickly, because I think this is hilarious. Did the Israelites know the Edomites? Because you know the one to say that America, you know, that's the Edomite nation, and the Edomites came and got them and all this. Did, did the Israelites know Edom? In fact, in Deuteronomy, before what happens in 28, didn't they have to cross through to Edom before they actually got into the land and the king of Edom wouldn't let them? Yep. Hmm. Wasn't Jacob and Esau, wasn't Esau Jacob's twin brother? So they knew the Edomites. So that couldn't be talking about Edomites now, could it? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Just something, just something to make you go, hmm. Uh, so real quick, uh, I said, uh, let's go to Isaiah you, you, 39. I got, I got it. Isaiah 39. Okay, 39. okay you got it? All right. It says, then Isaiah, the prophet, came to King Hezekiah and said to him, what did these men say? And from where have they come to you? And Hezekiah said, they have come to me from a far country. Oh, man, you don't even want to hear this country. From Babylon. That's what it says. So when you use, oh, man, it's America, because Babylon was right there next to him. Well, the scripture is clear. It says that this is a far country from Babylon. And as we just read to you in Jeremiah 15 and 5, behold, I am bringing a nation against you from afar, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. It is an enduring nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not know, nor can you understand what they say. And that's in the uh, NIV. But in the King James Version, as we just read, you see that this nation is a nation from afar, a mighty nation, an ancient nation, whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest. Watch what it says. It says, their quiver is an open sepulcher. They are all mighty men. And they shall eat up thine harvest, ain't that what Deuteronomy said? And thy bread, which is thy sons and thy daughters, should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thy herds. Man, Deuteronomy is, is all right here. They shall eat up thy vine <laughs> and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities. I'm, I, you know you didn't have no fences in Africa. Stop playing games. Where thou <laughs> trusted with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, said the Lord, I will make a full end with you, right? Now watch this. It says, and ye shall, he says, he said, he said, nevertheless, says the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. I'm sorry. And it says, and ye shall come to pa- and it shall come to pass when ye shall say, Lord, our God, do of all these things unto us. Then shall thou answer them. Likewise, as ye have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land, 
Notice it keeps saying your land, right? So shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours, declares this in the house of Judah. So I just wanted to bring that out. For those Man, you have them brothers, you, you, have, you, you, bring, you bring that out to some of these guys and they'll be like, no, nah, no, nah, see, brother, that's talking about West Africa. See, that was a land we didn't know until they realized that that's talking about the Babylonian captivity. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that, 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 that argument that you guys use from afar, that's over with. That's, I mean, you can no longer run to that anymore. Now, to finish it up, watch what it says. It says in 46, I mean, I'm sorry, 36, it says, um, it says, the Lord, sh it says, and, and thou, it says, a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there should thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So, yeah, we can finish up right there. And that's, you know, if you got something that you want to add to that, uh, some of the other scriptures, because we got more, plenty of scriptures that confirm what nation did came from afar, because there's really three nations that it says that came from afar, from uh, uh, the ends of the earth. Uh, uh, also, uh, Isaiah 5 and 26. It says, right. uh, yeah, I mean, he will also look at... Not, not to mention the fact that they followed after the gods of the Babylonians and different things like that. And that's something that we can get into if anybody wants to go in, you know, uh, you know wants us to go into that, go in depth on that. We can definitely do that. But yeah, man, I mean, that, you know, because uh, we definitely want to get some callers in here. Yeah, I know they probably have some questions. So, Sal, uh, yeah, man, whenever you're ready, man, you know, you can bring the first caller in. Uh, start answering some questions, man. All right, here we go. We're going to the phone lines, by the way, now. If you're listening on social media, uh, the number is 319-527-6239. If you're already calling in, all you got to do is press number one, and then we'll add you in. We have a few people lined up with questions and comments. Uh, for the first-time callers, you got to keep it clean, though, keep it professional. When you call in, let's go to the first caller. Let's go to 281-797. You're live on the air. Yo, what's going on? SOG, stand up. Hey, can you hear me, Sal? What's going on, bro? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, what's up, Faithful hey, G-Con? It's Brother Terrence, man. What's up, Terrence? Oh, doing, in the house. What's going on with you, man? What's going on with you, brother? I'm doing well, man. I'm just listening in on this call, man. Um, Y'all doing a good job, man. I I'm just here, you know, <laughs> waiting for these Israelites to call and see what they going to say. Um, I do got a comment, though, man. Y'all, like I just said, y'all doing a good job. Um, I want to wait. I want to, I want y'all to get to uh, do the round of 28 and 61. Because I'm pretty sure they're going to be like, well, the sicknesses that's written in the whole the whole Torah, you know, <laughs> they probably gonna say that's about America. I just wanna see what these Israelites gonna say when you get to Deuteronomy twenty eight verse sixty one, you know. That's all Yeah, man. But yeah, we definitely gonna address <clears throat> that when we get a chance. And we get in there though, man. And I'm telling you, sixty eight gonna be the one. That's the one I'm I'm looking forward to sixty eight, man. Really looking forward to that one, man. But yeah, we're gonna get to sixty one and everything else, man. Hey, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you for calling me, brother. All right, man. Y'all keep doing the thing. Man, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next caller, though. Let's go to 404 uh, 788 there. Oh, Lord, the swordsman, a.k.a. the pride, man. You spark it off. I'm going to put you out. Hey, I want to say this, right? Man, who taught you cats? Uh, Jimmy Swaggin, man? You guys need to put the Bible down for you hurt yourself, man. What is wrong with y'all, man? Like I told you. Hey, hey wait, real quick, man. I will get to you hey, guys. Now, you before before you say something, though. Hold on, let me finish. Uh, you guys let sound go, smart go, to somebody. No, you sound smart to somebody. But I'm going to give you this, right? You're right. Deuteronomy 28 talks of variations of captivities. That's true. Not just, you know, the, the slave trade. But I'm going to ask you this. I want to ask you this, faithful God. When you go to Deuteronomy 32, verses 26, can you say this prophecy fit now? It says, I say I will scatter them into corners 
I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Can this fit America? Can the remembrance of Israel cease from among men in America? Can that prophecy fit America? Yes or no? And I got another prophecy. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. What is 32, I think? Let me get the 32 and what? Deuteronomy 32, Deuteronomy. verse 26, because that co-signed with what Christ said in Luke 21, 24. He shall be scattered into all nations, right? So hey, I want to ask you a question. question. No, 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 no. Yeah. Before, you, before you get to that, very quickly. Did Christ not say that whoever is not with him is against him, and whoever is against him shall scatter? Did he not say that? What, what do you, what do you, what do you, what that got to do with what I'm asking? Well, well I'm, get, I'm getting that a lot. I'm asking you, did he not say that whoever is not with him shall scatter? Yeah, but that's not the same context. That's not the same context. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. You, you, hold on a second. You no, said let, let's that read. when, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to let me, you got to let me deal with that, man. Listen, because wouldn't the ultimate disrespect, the one that would cause Israel to be taken off of the land, for that, for that time, for the time of the Gentiles to come in, wouldn't that be rejecting the Son of God? Now, I'm not saying all Israelites did that. I don't want you to misconstrue me. But wouldn't that apply to the people who rejected Christ in the land of Judea during that time? Well, can, can we read the scripture since you want to deal with that? Well, 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 before you get to that scripture, because I'm dealing with your question. Here's the thing. Right, but I'm after with the scripture. Israel, Israel was scattered. Israel was scattered before the time before Christ talked about the time of the Gentiles, correct? So wouldn't it make sense that Israel would be scattered in all nations during the time even of Christ, at least the nations that existed during that time? Now, if you want to talk about in the future, uh, today I could tell you with absolute certainty that you have a Israelite in every nation on earth because the Lord said He would scatter Israel into all nations. The question isn't that. The question is, does that fit the narrative of the transatlantic slave trade? Was the transatlantic slave trade the means by which Israel was scattered into all nations? And the answer is no, because it would not fit a bunch of different things. That's the thing that you can't reconcile. Now, so, you say so there was different scattering. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Wait, wait, wait. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Let me just finish up. Let me just finish up. I'm almost done, and I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to stay quiet. The thing is that you said, uh, Israel, wouldn't they be scattered because, you know, these, these curses are supposed to be ongoing, right? Um, again, nobody's disagreeing that Israel was scattered and that the curses would be ongoing. The question is, do all the curses of Deuteronomy 28, starting at verse 15 and going to 68, fit the transatlantic slave trade? And then furthermore, if the curses are ongoing to war, shouldn't you be expecting to go into Egypt again on ships? Since, you know, they're right. perpetual and all. Right. Let, let me make my point. First of all, this is what a lot of you are missing, okay? The curse that was po imposed upon Adam and Eve is also in Deuteronomy 28, because Israel is the offspring of Adam and Eve, so a lot of curses that fell upon them is in Deuteronomy too. when they talk about the land being plagued, when they talk about the locusts taking over, and like I said to you earlier, I give you that. The, the curses have variations in different captivities of Israel. But the reason why I pull out that scripture, because you need to tell, because you're going to have to explain Ezekiel 37 about the dead bones, okay, which have not come to pass yet, okay? Who are these dead bones, the valley of dead bones? Wait, 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 wait. That is that going to be fulfilled? And that's where you guys are going to run into a brick wall, I'm telling you. Trust me, not right, you, said I wanna... that, you said that the bones, at, hold on a second. So when Christ makes those who are dead alive again, wouldn't that include right. the descendants of Jacob? So hold on a second. The question is, do you think that every single physical descendant of Israel is going to be saved? Or do you think that the remnant is going to be saved? It's a remnant. That's what it tell you in Romans. It tell you about the remnant. Okay. That's what Paul was talking okay, about. So from you're the telling me that... Right, right, right. So you're saying that Paul, for example, who was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, he mm -hmm. wasn't one of the bones that was made alive. I mean, he was a Pharisee before he went on the Damascus Road. He was under the, if you want to be technical, he was under the covenant or the, or the curses because he didn't know Christ yet. But the scriptures tell you that okay, those who know Christ are redeemed from the curse of the law. Hold up. The, the scriptures tell you in Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us 
from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is whoever who hangeth on the tree, right? So the question is, wouldn't that include Paul, who became a believer, Peter, who became a believer, John, who became a believer, all the early right. disciples of the people in Acts chapter 2, when, it, when, when the words of Joel chapter 2 were, were fulfilled in that place at that time? Let me say this. Let me say this. Hold on. Let me say this. This is what you're missing, okay? You got to go by the book. This is Luke 21, 24. And it says, mm -hmm. they shall fall by the edge of the sword. That's 70 AD, right? They shall be led away captive in all nations. That's what happened next. Then it says, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So once they were scattered, the Gentiles took over Jerusalem. They're in there today. We're still in this prophecy. We're living in this Romans, prophecy right now. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Romans 11 oh, says that you gotta let G-Con you gotta let G-Con respond too now. You gotta let G-Con okay, yeah, 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 let me let me get in here real quick. Uh um now you let me finish to, that uh, and I'm gonna give it to you. All right, go ahead. Let bro. me finish. Then it says, I'm gonna get right to you. This says, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What is the time of the Gentile being fulfilled? It tell you when you go to Romans. The 11th chapter, Paul told you there's a decree that came with the Gentiles. If they don't keep them laws, they're going to also be cut off. And their time is coming. That's why the earth is being judged. That's why Christ is going to return. That's what you're leaving out. You don't understand the Bible, but go ahead. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I was about to go to Romans 11 right now. Right, right. I was about to go to Romans 11. Right, right. I, I, I about to go to Romans take it back. You, you went to uh, Proverbs. I mean, you went to, uh, what was that scripture you went to? You said the, uh, the first scripture you went to, you said... Uh, Deuteronomy 32. And what does it say again? Deuteronomy 32, 21. What does it say? Hold on, let me get it. Hold on. Deuteronomy 32. I can read it. Hold on. Deuteronomy 32. Hold on. Yeah, 26. Deuteronomy 32, 26. It says, I said I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Right. So, uh, what are you? What are you trying to insinuate there? What are you saying? Are you saying that they no, will I think be what forgotten? I'm no, right. Because when he pulled out the captivities, right, those were times that he pulled out when Israel knew who they were. So, what I'm asking is, during this court of this prophecy, there's a time of captivity that Israel is in that they they're not going to know who they are. And I said, does no, that fit America? What because the, what is it saying that? Read that again. The last part it says the the memory to the the memory of what to cease among men. Read that one more time. I don't have it before. I'll say it again. I'll scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Right. The what remembrance mean of them. Now watch this. Watch this. Here, 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 here it is right here. Proverbs ten and seven. Watch what this says. It says. The memory of the just is blessed, right? But the name of the wicked shall rot. You know what that means? That means mm -hmm. that, that this is what this means. That means that everything great that Israel would have ever done if they was living righteous and was just will be always remembered, even as Rahab told the other nations when they came up out of uh, the wilderness, and they came into the land of the spy. I mean, they spied the land. She said, "We know what your God has done unto the other nations, and how great He is." Now, if them people would have remained just, Israel, everything that they would have ever did, the greatness would have never rotted. But they became wicked, and it rotted. So, when it says the memory of remembrance of them among other nations, it's talking about remembrance of the great things that they did but they wicked and that's the rotten now because the scripture says the you added that no oh, oh, you added that hold on, it didn't hold say on that. bro let me let me read it let me read it to you it says the memory of the just is blessed but the name of the wicked shall rot the very scripture that you're trying to use is not talking about that they will forget their identity at all it's talking about that people won't remember anything that the Lord had did among them and the things that they did, hey, and they will forget hey, those things. And guess what? Smash Israel. And that's wait, what wait, 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 w
Well, hold on, hold on, brothers. Hold on, brothers. I, I, I want to ask for something very quickly. War. You read Second Ezra, right? You deal with Second Ezra? Yes, sir. Okay. Explain to me how in verse 13 it says that the northern tribes, according to your understanding, uh, you believe that, uh, what is that? Arthaneth is, is talking about America, right? Well, that's, that's what was taught to us, and that's still in negotiation. I don't, I don't really, a lot of stuff we still researching that we had to re recap. Oh, so I'm no, not no, no, that's fine. That. That's, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But regardless, though, that, that was what was taught at the original school. So here's the question. Um, how did those people know how to keep the law, statutes, and commandments and remember who they were? Because they had to know who they were to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You would agree, award, right? If, if we're going right. by that sort of understanding of that verse. So then right. why are you saying that they would, so according to your understanding of Deuteronomy 32, and, and I believe was it verse 26, 26, you're saying that Israel would forget who they were. And yet we know that there have always been Israelites who know who they were throughout history. So why, and, and I'm not, and I'm not, by the way, for those listening, I'm not validating second Ezra. I believe second Ezra is a false book. There, there's a false prophecy in a, uh, uh, chapter 7, verses 28 and 29. Uh, I believe even Absolute Bible Truth uh, brought that out in one of their lessons. But needless to say, the funny thing is that uh, even, even in your worldview, people had to know they were Israelites because a lot of y'all, uh, not, not saying you specifically, but a lot of the guys from your side of the fence or the one West side, they be coming out and saying stuff like, Oh, well, you know, the people in West Africa was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. The people in America was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. But how could they be keeping the law, statutes, and commandments if they forgot who they were? That doesn't make any sense. That understanding makes no sense. It actually creates contradictions in your doctrine. You see what I'm saying? No, not, there was always a remnant, always a remnant that had the spirit with them, always, throughout all captivities. There was always a remnant that okay. had the spirit with them. The majority of us lost it majority okay but you're saying according to 32 and 26 that they would all forget it i mean that's kind of what you're arguing for in a sense like they would they would just forget who they were no this is what i'm saying this is Isaiah 60 verse 2 for behold the darkness shall cover the earth that's what happened the whole darkness took over the earth the whole identity of everybody is gone then it says and gross darkness to people so israelites really lost who they were all nations lost their true identity what Israelites wait, really wait, wait. lost it. You just said what I'm saying. You just said that they didn't. You just said that the hold on. You just said that they didn't. Uh, you just said it was just the majority. So you did have a remnant that, that knew who they were. So right. which is it? Which did they not know or they just do know? Huh? No, I said, huh? I said, no, according saying, to your understanding, like you're saying they didn't know who they were, but now you're saying they did you said they did, and now you're saying they didn't. You're going back and forth. You're saying they did and then they didn't. So it's gotta be I one or the I'm other. Did they or didn't go? Hey, no, hold on. Hold on. After that, hold on. After that, fellas, we got to take some more callers. Let them respond. Okay, good, good, good. We're with we you. Bring the shutdown crew on. We're with you. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Real quick. Now, let me, let me, let me bring out one more scripture real quick. It says, uh, um, so, so, uh, when you look at it, it says, uh, uh, Psalms 83 and 4. It says, they have said, come and let us cut them off for being a nation. That the name of Israel may no more be no more in mem remembrance. So that that scripture that you're talking about is talking about God basically cutting the name off of Israel. The people, not I mean uh, the people cutting the I mean the people cutting the name off. Of, I mean God cutting Israel's name. I mean them people cutting Israel's name off so that they can be remembered. Remember no more among. The nations. That's what that's talking about. It's not talking about them forgetting their identity at all. Go ahead, Sam. All right, family. Hope you guys take it down the notes. Like I always say, take down the notes and make sure you go study the information. Let's go to the next caller. Let's go to nine five four six eight three. Live in the air. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Messenger of Truth. Um, hey, what's going on, man? What's going on, Faith? Um, How you been? Um, I just want to make maybe three, um, three points and then move on. I know, Faith, you said a few times you want to get to that last verse or like 68 or something like that, but I'm just going to make three points and let you guys get back to it. Number one, 
whenever dealing with Deuteronomy 28, I would suggest learning the complete work of Flavius Josephus. Josephus wrote how Fronto uh, took the youngest and the strongest and the most handsome of man for himself, meaning the Jews, and everybody above the age of 17. Uh, the rest of them, he basically put them in bonds, in the yoke of bondage on their necks, and he sent them to work as slaves in the Egyptian mines. Now, Flavius Josephus, for anyone that doesn't know, he was a Hebrew historian. Not just a historian, he was an eyewitness. So he saw the decimation of Israel in the first century. Something else Flavius wrote, uh, Josephus wrote, he wrote how uh, Jews were taken as slaves and some of them were thrown overboard to drown as they were taken to work the Egyptian mines. So when a Hebrew Israelite says to me, going back to Egypt, on ships, Flavius Josephus wrote about this about 1,600 years before any African American even existed. It happened over a thousand years before this country existed. <clears throat> so I'll just say, number one, learn the writings of Flavius Joseph. He talks about how a woman ate her uh, cook and ate her child and fed it to other people because they were starving. Really, Israel basically decimated itself. Rome just went in and, and swept it up. Um, he wrote how children were taken as slaves. He wrote how so many were sold as slaves that couldn't all be sold. You familiarize yourself with the works of Josephus. It's, it's no way anybody can use Deuteronomy 28 to suggest it's any other people other than the Jews. And that happened 1,600, actually 2,000 years ago. Uh, but it happened 1,600 years before any African-American existed. The second point I want to make is the prophet Haggai. Haggai also wrote about covenant rebellion, basically Deuteronomy 28. The whole history of it is Moses said that when he's, when he's going to die, Israel is going to go back to sinning. And for centuries, the Hebrew prophets were warning Israel against sin. They were saying, if you keep sinning, you're going to go into exile. If you keep sinning, you're going to go into destruction. All the way up to Jeremiah. Jeremiah begged and he pleaded with Israel to stop sinning because Babylon was coming. They didn't listen to any of the prophets. They didn't listen to Jeremiah. And now here comes Babylon. Babylon dismantles Israel. And that's when prophets like Daniel enter the picture. Daniel went in as a, as a Hebrew boy, a teenager. By the time he was thrown in the lion's den, he was a senior citizen. But then comes the nation of Persia. It's Babylon, and now they're ruling. And the Persian king basically allows Israel to regather itself, to rebuild the temple, things like that. So men like Haggai, Ezra, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, they're working to basically rebuild the temple and, and work with the regathering of the Jews back to the land. So my but two let's, points were... Can I, can, I, can I interject for a moment? Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm definitely <laughs> agreeing with uh, a lot of what you're saying. Um, for example, like, you know, I was going to bring out some of the stuff in Josephus. Uh, not just that. There's actually some other things that uh, will probably, you know, some, some, some of these Hebrews like proponents might know about it because they use it whenever they make appeals to other things. But, um, but I actually have a surprise, man. I have a surprise for them. I have something that I think is a little more direct than just uh, War of the Jews, which is, uh, well, I'll just, I'll just say uh, stay tuned for everybody out there because I'm going to bring it out when we get to 68. <laughs> I got a lot of information to bring out, man. Yeah, man. I'm waiting for it. All I'm saying is that Josephus, he was an eyewitness. He's not somebody writing the book in the 16, in the 1960s or somebody that heard about it. He actually saw what was going on in the first century and he wrote about it. So what I'm saying is that it happened 1,600 years before African Americans existed. Josephus wrote about it and it happened 2,500 years with the prophet Haggai because Haggai wrote about it. So those are my two points. My last and final point will be Deuteronomy 28 is not prophecy. I hear that over 
and over and over that Deuteronomy 28 is prophecy. It's the conditions of the covenant. The old covenant is conditional. It's if, then. If you obey, then I will curse. If you do not obey, then I, sorry, if you obey, then I will bless. If you do not obey, then I will curse. The old covenant, every, everybody should know this. The old covenant is conditional. The new covenant is unconditional because it's based on I will. Like I will put my law in their hearts. I will be their God. So those are my three points. These things happened long before America existed. That's my whole point. So if it happened over a thousand and over 2000 years before America existed, it's impossible for it to be about African-American slavery. It's impossible. And, and I was telling Sherry last night, because I was talking to her um, about, you know, the snake. You know, there's that snake that's not poisonous, but it looks like the poisonous snake. I don't remember what it's called. Just because there are some similarities in African-American slavery, just because there are similarities doesn't make you the poisonous snake. You're actually the non-poisonous snake. You have similarities, but you're not it. I get that African-American slavery was bad. It was brutal. No one's saying it wasn't. But just because you experienced that does not make you a Jew. What Jews have experienced is far, far worse. So that's my only real point. You guys take care. Hey, Faithful, it's great speaking with you, man. I haven't, haven't heard from you in yeah. months. You know, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, man. But all right, yeah. So but I, I appreciate you calling in, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Just to let you know, we have like 17 minutes on the air, so we may go into the overtime portion of the show. What that means, you can listen on social media, you can listen on Blog Talk Radio via internet, then have to call in. We are going to be a Skype to hear the rest of the show live. But again, we have like 16 minutes on the air. We're going to take some more of your callers, some more of the callers out there. Let's go to the next caller. Let's go to 813 445. Live on air. Hey, how y'all doing today? Hey, what's going on? What's going on, what's going on brother? Yeah, y'all can hear me good? Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, you're good to go, man. All right, for sure. Uh, yeah, I just had a few questions. Um, I'm kind of biased, okay. you know. I'm not really going to debate with y'all. I just had some, just trying to get some clarity. Um, okay, could I ask you I this is, if you don't mind, if you don't mind me asking? Could I ask who this is? I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Yeah, could, could, you, you didn't say your name. Who are you? And uh, oh. you know, what's your? Oh, my, my bad. Uh, I'm Elijah. You know, I wrote on the. I was writing in the. Um, the little live chat thing. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, like I said, I'm gonna remain biased. I just, just asking some questions just for clarity. Um, okay. I know the last brother on the phone just said uh, that Deuteronomy 28 wasn't a uh, prophecy. So just dealing with the Old Testament in general, are there any unfulfilled prophecies in the Old Testament? Uh, yes, there's. Okay. Uh, there's some unfulfilled prophecies, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, I always wondered that. And then um, <clears throat> as far as a, a nation of people, uh, as far as uh, the part when I was talking about going out in ships and so forth, um, the last letter said that, there, that they did go out in ships before or they didn't? I, I didn't catch what he said. Wait, wait, say that again? Repeat. I can hear what you say in, that again. In, Deuteron in Deuteronomy, when it says you will go out, you will go out on ships again into Egypt. I don't remember mm -hmm. if the brother again? said that that happened already, or he said it didn't happen already. Hold up, can I can I ask you what what, what does it say? You shall go again into Egypt, again into Egypt. My question to yeah. you is, what is Egypt? What, what is your understanding of Egypt? Do you believe that's the house of bondage, or do you believe that's America? What what is your understanding of Egypt? House of bondage. Uh, okay. my, my okay. My understanding is, you know, it's bondage, but, you know, I mean, I'm just, that's okay, just so a general Okay, so you believe Egypt is a house of bondage, right? So, so, all right, my question is, they would go again into Egypt, right, to Ms. Rain mm -hmm. in, the, in the Hebrew. So, mm -hmm. my question is, when did the Israelites go back into America? 
Because if America is, is bondage, they're going back into America. Is that, is that how you're understanding that verse, or are you understanding it as well, bondage being well, a general? Well, 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 let, me, let me clarify. Let me, well, let me clarify. Let me clarify. Oh, my bad. I'm not trying to, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to misrepresent you. Yeah, I'm not oh, trying to misrepresent you. I think you I think know, know what you're saying. Go ahead, man. Let him go and answer. Okay, you yeah. Know, okay. Like, go ahead. Yeah. Don't necessarily say America, because bondage could be anything. Bondage doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a, a country. Like, it could be America. It could be, you know, wherever that particular bondage is. But... <clears throat> You know, Israel and Egypt is, is not really that far apart for them to have to go out into ships. So that's why I'm asking that's, if that's, the brother that's said that. Right. That's, 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 that's why. But that's, but that's the problem. If, if, I, if I could just address. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Let me, let me address that real quick because uh, um, that's why I brought out that uh, if you look at it when it says literal Egypt, right? Um, yeah. If you notice, uh, it says, it says, it said, it said literal Egypt. Why is it that you guys say that that's bondage, right? But then when they went to Assyria or when they went to Babylon, those things are not listed as bondage there. You you say what well, they uh, well, well, America's woman is Babylon, then it's Egypt. W which one is it? You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, as you stated, you know, you stated before anything, anybody can go into bondage. But I think the scripture is clear where these people went. Now I want to bring out something because you said something about where ships can go. Uh, uh, why would they need to use ships to go and it's right next door and that lets me know that yeah. you say stuff like that you haven't really done your homework nor do you know anything about geography so it's kind of you know embarrassing that if you say you have these scriptures you will actually say something about that because we have historical documents to where let's look at this and i brought this out earlier um you know um let's grab this real, real quick, real quick. Uh, brother can, can you hear me because i had dropped out um uh, yeah, I carry. Yeah, I carry. Yeah, I carry. Yeah, real, real quick though, before you bring that out, uh, Brother Lamar, um, uh, and, and your name is uh, Eliyahu. Did I did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, Eliyahu. Here, here's my thing. Um, you say it wouldn't it would it wouldn't be it wouldn't be necessary to take them on ships, but do you know anything about slavery in ancient times? Have you actually done research into that? Because yeah, yeah, I have. I'm just, I'm asking questions right now. It's not really from my understanding. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get a lesson from you. I want y'all to teach me. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Well, well yeah. right. so, so, I'm not trying to be all dry. I'm trying to ask y'all yeah, yeah. to get to get clarity That's from, right, right. from so, you. You know, I'm just trying to get your understanding of it. Not not my understanding. No, no. Right. Let me let me bring understand. this. Uh, let me bring some. Let me bring something out. Real quick. I got some uh, some work right yeah. here. Uh, now we yeah, brought yeah, this bring, out. Bring uh, your facts uh, out. Uh, no. My facts are relevant. I'm I'm biased. I'm, right. I'm neutral. I'm, right, right, right. I'm, I'm well, actually, you're not biased. You're, you're, you're not biased. Unbiased. You're playing that role. Unbiased. Yeah, you, you, right. You, I, you, I, I'm no, not you, saying. I'm not saying what I follow. What I believe. I'm just. I'm trying right, to get right, right, right. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. You're, hold on. Let me say this, brother. Let me say. Let me, so let we can cut. It sounds like you got two or three people on the line. You got to mute. You got to mute. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, let's let's long, just long, the chat. Uh, uh, right, well, hold on, bro. Uh, hold on. We, we hear you. Peace, brother. Peace. Hold on. Let me bring this out real yeah. quick. Peace to you, brother. You brothers in the background. Okay. <laughs> ain't no bias. Ain't no biasness. We cut straight to the chat. I'm pretty sure we all know what's going on here and what what, what manner of uh, spirit you're coming in. Now let's look at this. What it says, Third Macedonia. Uh, now, so 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 we can know that these they was using ships back then. And these ships was being used out through the province. And I remember, I didn't say that they didn't. Now, I never oh. said that they well, didn't. Right, well, I'm, That's I'm not what I said. Out, that was, that was in my question. I understand. I understand. Hold mm -hmm. fast. Hey, hold on. Before, let before let you read Third Macedonia, let them bring the information. Uh, let, let, let them bring the information wait, out. Because, brother, uh, brother, both of you. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on real quick. Hold on. Shalom, shalom, brother. Shalom, brother. This is brother. This is brother Johannes. Brother Yarn. Uh, the brother was act. The brother was asking. Uh, we actually joined the call with the brother. The brother was asking us some questions. We told the brother if he don't mind, he can call in and get another point of view. So when the brother's telling you he is, I'm, he's uh, he's not biased. He was being diligent. But see, you brothers are mm -hmm. are, are, are. I'm not understanding. Yeah, you're about to get into the information, though. Because the brother, brother, the brother, the brother, brother. Hey, 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 hey. Let him feel. Let him feel. Let him feel. Let him feel. One at a time. Yeah. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. See, that's the thing. About, uh, yeah. So while we're listening in on the call, for some reason, every time we uh, any any individual gets to speak or say two things, 
the brother faithful is cutting them off. That's, that's ignorant in itself. Well, all, all the brother asked us the question, we gave him our opinion. So he said, you know what? I said, listen, they're having a, a, a chat tonight uh, about Deuteronomy 28. Now, if you want more information because you've been stuck, you, you haven't been studying long. The brother has only been, um, been studying for a, a, a few months. So the brother is actually trying to get a diligent answer from you brothers. Mm -hmm. But you brothers are sure. coming because you, looked at his, because you looked at his name. Now you're judging him based on his name. The brother doesn't understand uh, everything you're that he's talking about. You're so right he's now. Let him feel. Let him feel. Let him feel. Let him go ahead. What is, I'm not understanding what is wrong with this brother faithful. The brother faithful needs to come in the spirit of humility. Just calm down. You got to understand. Like I said, he contacted. But you're, but you're bearing he false witness. You need to stop that. Wait, wait, it's no bearing false witness. The brother, the brother, be conscious, just said we understand the spirit. Clearly, you didn't understand the brother's fear because he was coming diligently. He was asking these questions because these are things that he wanted to know. That's these are things that he and actually nobody, wanted to know. And nobody but is defeated. Brother, brother, are you going to monologue or are you going to dialogue? Hold I, on, I, I, see, I, I see you. Yeah, yeah, I see you. Let's see. 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 let Right, right, but let me let me get my. Hey, can I say something? Or are you gonna just Go keep ahead. talking at me and not not let me say something? Number one, nobody was judging his brother. Number one, number two, we were answering his question and we kept hearing people on the background talking. We heard you, we heard someone else, and so it's like we didn't even know that there were other people on the phone call. We thought we were just talking with him. That's a little strange in and of itself. And number three, we were again going to address his question very calmly, very diligently. But for whatever reason, you seem to be a little ruffled, man. I mean, I think you need to calm down. Let us address your question or address his question and, and just keep it moving. Let me let me let me bring out this uh, Maccabee because we, we really we really would just want to bring out the information to answer his question, answer the brother question, because uh, I did hear multiple people in the background certain, saying certain things. So, but uh, we we want to deal with that. It's a uh, third Maccabees, right? And uh, this this is the Septuagint from the Septuagint LXS, the Apocrypha. It says, uh, and so did we know that they was using ships back then, and not only that is. That these people was uh in going was going into Egypt and also uh going to certain parts of Egypt in ships. It says, Whenever this decree was read, a feast was arranged for the Gentiles at public expense with shouts of joy. Their deep long standing hatred was now openly being revealed. But among the Jews there were constant grief, lament, and crying. Everywhere their hearts were on fire as they groaned and bewailed the unexpected destruction that the king had suddenly inflicted on them. What district or city or what inhabited place of any kind or what streets weren't filled with grieving and weeping for them. They were being sent off together by generals in every city in the merciless and cruel manner. At the sight of these unusual punishments, even some of the Jews' enemies wept over their most miserable explosions, for they saw their, 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 they saw their uh, pitiable state and reflected on the uncertain outcome of life. A multitude of gray-haired elderly men were being led away, bent over with age, their feet plodding along under the stress of a forced swift march. With no consideration given to their age, young women who had just entered the bridal bread bedroom for the sharing of life exchanged joy for weeping and sprinkled dust on their head, the hair that was still wet with perfume. They were led away with their heads bare and began to sing at, at, at a, funeral song, a funeral song together in a place of a wedding song. As they were roughly handed, handled by cruel treatment for a, of, of a foreign nation, watch what it said. These captives were vitally dragged away in public to be put on board ship. This is third Maccabees. Watch what it says. Their festival, I mean, it says their husbands in the prime of their youth had ropes tied around their necks instead of festival garlands. They spent the remaining days of their wedding festival weeping rather than celebrating and enjoying useful amusements, seeing the graves already yawning at their feet. They were driven like animals constrained by the power of iron chains. Some were fastened by the neck, 
to the ship's benches, 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 I'm sorry, bench. Some were secured by their feet with unbreakable shackles. Moreover, they were plunged into total darkness due to the thick, thick planks positioned above them so that they would receive the treatment due to traitors throughout the entire voyage. Watch what this says. Key in on this verse. It says, when these people had been brought to the place called Skadia and the voyage was finished, just as the king had decreed, Ptolemy, king of Egypt, and a Greek ordered the entrance to be encamped on the outskirts of the city. Now, what I wanted to bring out of this is, is that number one is, these people were in dealing with the Ptolemy period, but were being transported by ships to Scandia, which is in Egypt. So they was coming from being transported through probably canals, also through by ship uh, uh, in Egypt during the Ptolemy period. So they definitely was using ships, and it didn't matter if it was close from Israel or whatever, but they was being transported from ships in Egypt. Go ahead, brother. Right, brother. Real quick, if if I could just say something very quickly. Also, I haven't gotten to Deuteronomy 2868. That's a literal fulfillment that actually happened with ships. Literal ships. And you're going to see that tonight, and it's not talking about the transatlantic slave trade. Hopefully we get a chance to get to it because I know we might be going into the overtime period in a moment. Um, but needless to say, we're definitely going to go and try to get through everything tonight. But before this show ends tonight, everybody out there will get their answer for Deuteronomy 2868. Right. And, and then also too, just to, just also too, just to build on that, when you also look at, uh, um, uh, uh, look at uh, Josephus war, uh, book three, war, the wars, Book three, chapter uh, 10, section nine, it talks about how they used also vessels and ships just as well uh, with uh, uh, coming into, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, dealing with Israel just as well. So I just wanted to bring that out. Vespasian, he came with vessels and he came with ships. And also Israel, we're going to show you when we do the second portion, that Israel had ships. Because when you read 9, it says, but now when the vessels were gotten ready, right, Vespasian put up upon shipboard. He put, I mean, Vespasian put upon shipboard as many of his forces as he thought sufficient to be too hard for those that were upon the lake because they was upon the lake. We're going to show you that uh, Josephus was talking about Israel had pirate ships just as well and was fighting on the lake during this time while Vespasian was coming up against them. So yes, they had ships during that time. And not only that, those same ships that they use when we get to Deuteronomy 28 and 68, we're going to show you that those Israelites were spread all throughout the provinces and uh, uh, as well as uh, under oh, the Roman provinces. Right, right. Right. So, right, well, right, so real quick, Sal, let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and continue this lesson, man, because I think, you know, if we don't continue the lesson, we're not going to get to the end of it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Yeah, as a matter of fact, you only like one minute before we go into the overtime portion of the show. So I got to call in right away if you're ready to let the show live. Again, the number is 319 527 6239. We're going into the portion. Go ahead, fellas. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up uh, Deuteronomy 28. Uh, again, for those who are listening, if we go into the overtime portion and you stop listening to this program live on the Bay Talk for You or wherever you're hearing it right now, um, you'll be able to listen to it after. What's going on, y'all? I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast, but if you want to hear the rest of this, the download link is in the description. It should be available tomorrow, so everybody out there can hear, hear the very end of this teaching. Uh, again, the download link is in the description, so when we're done, y'all can definitely check it out, um, and with that being said, God bless you all. I hope this has edified someone out there, and we are certainly going to tackle Deuteronomy 2868. Check out the download link for that. Take care, y'all.